Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vol, and in this video we're going to have a look at the incredibly powerful Split Edges and Faces Transform option. So I've dived down a bit of a rabbit hole recently after a comment by Met Samuel on another video and he mentioned this transform option and it's amazing. So I thought I'd do a video looking into this and what sort of tricks you can do with it. So what I've got here is an arch and we're going to be using this to create well, a gothic style arch and we want something a little bit more interesting here. And what I'd normally do is create the outline of this using different objects and then bring it in as a profile. So let's have a look at that process and why this option is going to make this so much easier. So let's shift A, mesh, and then bring in a plane. That's probably going to be a bit big, so let's shrink it down and control it in A and apply the scale. And then we're going to start adding all of this information, basically all the detailing we want. So I'm going to go into vertex mode and we're going to add in a circle that's going to be part of this. So shift A, and circle. Notice I'm still in edit mode, so this is all part of the same object, and I can S to scale it in, and then I'm just going to G and then X, and we'd want to bring this to somewhere, let's say here. But this is a problem. We've effectively got one object, but it's made up of two different parts. This part here, and this part here, and they're not really combined in any way, which is not very helpful for us. Let's go back a step. So what we're going to do is activate this split edges and faces option. Now, this comes off the Auto Merge Vertices option here. Now, what that does, if you don't know, is if I select these two, and then let's Control and E and subdivide it so we've got a vert here. Without this on, if I GG and bring it to the end, and then press G to move it, you can see we actually end up with two vertices on top of each other. If instead I have Auto Merge Vertices put on, and then I GG, bring it to the end, what you'll notice has happened is that the two vertices have combined. And if I press G, you can see they're one thing. Now, we're going to take this a stage further. So let's have a look at this. So I'm going to select all of these vertices here. And under the Options menu, underneath Auto Merge Vertices, so you can turn it off and on here as well, I'm going to click the Split Edges and Faces option. Now, what this is going to do is Blender is automatically, if any edges overlap each other, Blender is going to look at that and go, oh, there should probably be a vertex here. Create vertices and merge them together on both the parts so it merges together to become one thing. So let's just have a look at this in action. So G and then X. And I'm going to move this out. And before when I did this, this didn't work very well. But now I'm going to place this here. If you just watch this point as I then click my mouse button to confirm it, Blender has automatically created this vertex and this vertex bisecting these edges and this edge and then the same over here to create one shape that are inseparable from one another. Well, you can separate it, but you know what I mean. And then we can just quite simply select all the vertices here and then X, delete those vertices and then let's X and delete that edge. So really, really quick way of doing this. We just move things around. Now, what I quite like doing actually is turning this off and then if I just bring in another plane, let's do that. And then let's S and add in a bit more detail here. And then G and then let's go X somewhere here. And I might go, no, I want this to be a bit wider. So let's S and Y and make it a bit wider. And you'll notice it's not splitting it at this point, which would be annoying because we want to keep editing until we get to the correct position. At the point I'm now happy with this, I can go to options, split faces and edges, and then just press G and then hit enter. And that G for grab, even though I haven't moved it anywhere, meant that Blender thinks I'm doing that move function and does all these calculations as we want. And then I can just come in again, delete those vertices, and I've got my profile shape that I want. In fact, I think this is probably a bit wide, so let's just G and then X that back a little bit, somewhere to about there. So we've got this now nice curving shape that we could do in other ways. We could have very easily done this with one plane and broke this out. But for me, this is a quicker way of doing it and allows me to fiddle around with the shapes. I'm gonna right click, convert to, and then a curve. So we've got this as a curve, and this is gonna allow me to come to my large plane, go to my object data properties, come to geometry, find where it says bevel, object, click, click, and then we've got this arch. So we can do this as we choose. But I find this really helpful. I think it's going to have a lot of potential for making shapes like this. Oh, I've just realized I've got this rotated the wrong way around. So let's just R, Z, 90 minus control and A and apply the rotation. And then we've got that the right way. So anyway, this is actually designed to be on the Y axis. So 
Either way, we can do that. So it's really easy to sort out, and this is just a nice option for using. Now, what we're gonna do is have a look at two other instances. Let's just bring these two cubes up of why this can be really handy. So let's say we've got this cube here, and I go into vertex mode, and for some reason, we've got some sort of split on it, and it's become triangulated. There's loads of reasons this happens in Blender, often a more complex situation where you're doing booleans and you end up with something like this and we don't want this here for some reason maybe we want to do something with it like we want to extrude out this face but we want it to be sort of squared off so either way just a sort of demonstration idea so what i want to do is i want this line to basically be vertical here so i could do this with a knife tool click z click enter go into edge mode click here Control and x to dissolve the edge and yeah okay that's fine so it's not that this is what's massively needed, but there are other ways around this. Firstly, if you don't want to use the knife tool, we could just click this vertex. Let's make sure this is on. Shift and D, Y, hold down control to go there. And this is going to now split that edge, which otherwise wouldn't have been split by this vertex. And we can then, for example, join that if we want to. But my preferred method, which we'll come on to over here, which, let's just turn this off just to demonstrate what would happen, is if I press the Alt-D shortcut, which does something called Extend Vertices. Now, what this normally does with this option turned off is if you press Alt and D, is that it rips this vertex away. It's still connected with the edges, so it's made a new edge here, and we could move this around, for example, somewhere over here, and it could create lots of issues with shape. And you'll notice if I press Alt and D and then press Y and drag it over this way and click, this hasn't actually solved the problem because there's a vertex on top of this edge, this longer edge that goes all the way across. We don't want that, so let's undo that. But with our split edges and faces on, if I Alt D and then press Y, keep it on the Y axis, Control to lock it to there, and then suddenly we've got this and it's perfect geometry. Everything's connected and we've sorted this out so I can come here and then just extrude that out if I want to. Now there is one more example of this being useful and that is over here. So let's just shift and D and then make a duplicate of this. So I've got this object here and we've got this going on. And I actually want to close this off. I want to make, I don't know, a weird sort of attish symbol that would be upside down. Anyway, so I'm going to control an R, bring in an edge loop here. And I'm going to select this face and I want to extrude this up. And importantly, I've got the split edges and faces on it. What that means is that if I press E to move it up and hold down control when it's there, when I click, if I go into vertex mode, it has joined all of these edges together. This edge is no longer one edge, it's been split into three, which would not normally happen, and this is all nicely combined together, with one exception, and that is that if I go into face mode, there is still a face in the middle here, which I'm gonna to have to X and delete that face. Now, this actually gives you a really solid level of control if you do this stage by stage. So if I do something over here where we're gonna go, I don't know, there, and then let's select these vertices, and then G and set those down, so we've got this at an angle, I can still do this really nicely. Let's just E to extrude these up, hold down control, so that we've got that there, click, it's split that edge, click here and here, G, Z, and then control and click, and then again, we've split all of this, it is now, really nicely combine those edges together though once again i do need to come in here and x and dissolve that face but a really nice option here for manipulating objects in a really quick and easy way without having to then come in and start subdividing and joining faces and edges together in what can be a really tedious process so thanks again for sharing met that's really appreciated i think this is hugely powerful if you can think of other uses of this, please do say in the comments section. As I say, I've just been playing around with this recently and wanted to share, or if you want to just say thanks to Met, again, feel free in the comments section. He deserves all the kudos for this, not me. And if you do think this is gonna be useful to you, feel free to hit that like button if you think this video deserves it. Have a great day, guys.